know, I've got to say the idea of death is a pretty fucking depressing thing, however you dress it up. As an atheist, I believe it's the end. That's it. That's the end of your conscious existence as well as your physical exit. Well, other than rotting away or the, the pile of ash from the crematorium, it's the end of your physical existence and it's the end of your conscious existence. That's it. You don't exist anymore. No more thinking, no more arguing, no more debating, no more love, no more passion, no more pain, no more hunger, no more feeling. Pretty depressing thing to think you don't exist anymore. And yet for me at least that's only a thousandth as depressing as the idea of there being an afterlife. And I can't help but I know this is the contentious part, I can't help that anybody who doesn't feel at least remotely similar hasn't really thought the whole thing through. You see, it seems to me that human beings are finite creatures with an expectation of a finite lifespan. The same as all creatures have an expectation of a finite lifespan. We're novelty seekers. We need new things all the time to keep us interested. We laud people who stick with hobbies or, or marriages for more than a few decades, don't we? What a fucking achievement that you've stuck with the same thing for a few decades dozen years. And yet that's nothing. That's, a, that's such a pathetically small period of time. In many ways it's such a pathetically small achievement outside of our human perspective of, of this finite 70 or 80 year, if we're lucky, lifespan. So this really fucking worries me because whereas I can accept I'm maybe going to live 80 years, then I'm going to die and I'm going to be able to fill those years with lots of good things to do. Maybe if you gave me a thousand years, I could get my head around that. But you're not offering me that. You're offering me a really, really, really intimidating and scary period of time. You're telling me that if after a billion years, I'm not really happy with it, that I'm going insane with boredom. Well, that's just tough because I've only just begun. That's just like the first nanosecond of my stay in heaven. And that's really fucking scary. You know, it makes you think back to when Christians or theists generally, they, they say things along the lines of, you know, atheists, they deny God because they want to do whatever they can without the fear of going to hell. Well, you know, I could fire back and say, no, it's not the fear of hell that makes me deny God. It's the fear of heaven. <laughs> that isn't actually why I'm an atheist. But, you know, that would be quite a good retort along those lines. So the thing is then, if heaven exists and we're going to stay there forever... How am I going to be made compatible with it? Because one thing that's for sure is that in my present form, I am absolutely incompatible with those kinds of time periods. So what's going to have to be removed from me? What are you going to have to remove from Noel Plum 99 to take away that horror of an infinite existence, to take away that love of novelty, uh, to take away that kind of temporality that my entire life and my thoughts seem to be based around? And what's really scary is what's going to be left. Is it still going to be me? Well, one of the things that really defines us is our memories and our memories of our family and our friends and people like that. So imagine the scene, if you will. You've been a good lad or a good lass all your life. You die. You turn up at the pearly gates and there's St. Peter there and you say to him, well, you know, I'd rather not have died right there under that fucking number nine bus, but, but I'm here now, and you know, I can't wait to see my wife who died the other year, and my parents, and I can't wait to see little Timmy, my child, who died when he was only four years old. And St. Peter says, oh, well, I've got a bit of bad news for you, actually, on that one, because they're all in the other place. Yes, you're really going to enjoy your unending billions of years knowing that all these relatives are burning down in hell. So the first thing that's going to have to go is your memories. Memories have got to be totally erased along with vast tracts of your personality. So that, are, that opens up a series of questions, okay? And the first is, is that once all this stuff's removed, in what way is this still me? You know, it seems that you're going to have to remove so much of me that makes me me. My memories, parts of my consciousness and my temporal thought, uh, my love of no novelty, of change, uh, my, my boredom threshold. All these things that 
in part define me are gone. What way am I still me anymore? The second question is, once you've removed all these things, should I really even give a shit about what's left? Because is it not going to be so far away from why I truly am that I shouldn't give a crap about it? And then the third question, and this is the real fucking kicker, if this is what happens when you die in preparation for the afterlife, that all these parts are removed in this kind of ultimate celestial lobotomy, why should I fear hell anymore? Because aren't these also going to be the parts that's going to make hell feel so horrific? If I'm going to be made so numb to things that I can survive an infinite period in heaven, then aren't I going to be so numb that an infinite period in hell should worry me no more and no less? My contention is, is that anybody who doesn't fear billions of years on ending of anything hasn't really thought the whole thing through. Because if you're in a position to survive it, then you're just a hollow husk of the magnificent person that you are now. Thank you for listening to this video.